honor to all of you all, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, honor to my wife who is joining me this morning. And uh, just so you know, I'm old school. Pastor David said we're brothers. I'm kind of sort of like a older, older, older brother. <laughs> He's young enough to be my son. And in fact, um, I think a couple of my kids are older than him. But I'm so great, grateful that you guys have allowed me to come here today. And I really do believe that there's a word from the Lord. Don't laugh at me because I'm still using the physical book. But my generation grew up with this. And so I'm going to stick with that if that's all right with you guys. We ask God's presence. Father, we thank you for all that has transpired thus far. We pray in the name of Jesus that you use your manservant, God, to de decree and declare your word, not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. We praise you today. We thank you. We magnify your name. I pray that everything that we say and do brings honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, eyesight, don't fail me this morning. In fact, give me a minute, y'all. I do need a little bit more light. That's what happens when you get above 50. All right. Amen. The, the Word of God, Psalm 27, and it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, Put not thy servant away with anger, in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. This is the part that I want you guys to pay close attention to and emphasis on the 13th verse, which says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Finally, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. If you all will allow me to, um, I would give a title uh, to this message on today, and it is, I almost quit. I almost quit. Is there anyone here who can relate to what the psalmist was feeling when he wrote this passage, and more specifically, this particular verse, verse 13? Anybody ever go through an experience or series of experiences that almost cause you to give up, almost cause you to quit? Quit believing, quit hoping, quit trusting, quit waiting, quit your marriage, quit your ministry, quit all kinds of things. This man clearly had gone through some things that made him grateful to the Lord, who is light, salvation, and strength. He celebrated the truth that even when his enemies attacked him, their attempts failed. He stated that an enemy should, if, if, even if an enemy should set up camp against him, he would not fear. And if war should rise up against him, he would still be confident. His desire and goal was to be in the place where God is. Is there anybody that wants to be in the place where God is? Hallelujah. He wanted to be in the place where God is. He says that no matter what was coming up against him, as long as he was in the presence of the Lord, there was totality of joy. At all times, his presence in the presence of the Lord where beauty resides, where he could be safe from harm, this is a good place to be. Where troubles don't destroy you. 
where the cares of the world don't overwhelm you, where even the worst situations are made better because God is here. Yet the psalmist, brothers and sisters, did something that I find very interesting. He interjects a verse that reminds us that even in the midst of our confessions of faith, when we are high and when we're praising God, there are days and times that try men's souls. Not just the weak people, but those who are strong or feel that they have to be strong for everyone else. Anybody ever feel like you have to be strong for everybody else? Right in the midst of celebrating the awesomeness of God and the confidence he has That after all he'd been through, God had kept him. He proclaimed, I had fainted until or unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He made it personal. He says, I, not you, not we, not they, but I. This thing had me in a chokehold. It wasn't happening to someone that I had read about or someone that I had heard about. It was happening to me. I would have fainted. I would have been lost. I would have given up. I would have thrown in the towel. I would have quit. The diagnosis was something fatal. The prognosis wasn't favorable. The money was all gone. The family seemed to be falling apart. The relationship was over. The finances weren't coming in. Whatever it was, something had him Hallelujah, pause and reflect. I almost called it quits. I almost gave up. But that conjunction right there means that there's a qualifier to that. But I believed, which is a prerequisite for receiving anything from God. I believed. I would, have, I would see God's goodness on this side of eternity I, while I'm still alive. I won't have to wait until the sweet by and by. God is going to turn this thing around for me while I yet live. Are there any believers to to attest to this today? Does anybody have an amen in your spirit? A so be it unto me. Does anybody know what David is stating here? Have you ever had the cares of life weigh you down so much that you almost gave up? But God... Something stirred in your spirit and reminded you that now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. Something moved in you and you remembered that the God that we serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Things got a little shaky for a season because that was, that's what happens in life. It was dark and I couldn't see past the darkness. My whole viewpoint was gloom and doom. But I was reminded that the same God who worked miracles for me before is still able to work miracles for me today. The same God who caused the lame man to walk, the blind man, the halt man, the dumb man to be made whole can yet make me whole and that right quickly. If I hold on, if I keep believing... If I give him something to work with, my miracle will come. It's my time. My breakthrough will come. Is there anyone here who knows that now faith, today's faith in 2020, hallelujah, is the building material of the things that we hope for, and it is the evidence of things that are not seen? The psalmist said, I almost quit. Something had shaken him to the core. Something had cut him to the quick. His bearings were off. He was confused and disappointed. He was ready to run away and never look back. But he believed. He believed God's promises. He believed in the sovereignty of his heavenly father. He believed that no matter how bad things got around him, he would witness the goodness of the Lord while he yet lived in his own lifetime. How do I know? I know this because he began this psalm by singing the praises of God. He shouted, the Lord is my salvation. He's my light. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. He celebrated God's power, God's ability 
to keep him from harm. I wonder if there's anybody here who can say, I'm so glad that even though times were tough and even though things seemed to be at their worst, I believed God. I trusted his word. I kept the faith. I waited until my change came. I almost quit, but I didn't. So I'm here today by the grace of God, not because of my own strength, Not because of my own work, not because I'm so good, not because I'm so worthy, but by God's grace. The psalmist concluded his psalm by encouraging the reader. He says, wait on the Lord. I wish we would do that. I wish we would not move on our own accounts or our own accords. I wish we wouldn't take matters into our own hand and try to fix things on our own. I wish we would learn as a a body of believers to wait on the Lord. To be, on, to be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot to contend with in this life. Sometimes there are situations that make us feel like we are, that we are, have been defeated and that the enemy has won and that God has forsaken us. But that's so far from the truth. The God who brought you through previous rough times is still able today. He's still opening doors that were closed to you. He's still restoring, restoring joy and peace which passes all understanding. He's still healing all diseases. He's still providing and still supplying all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We may be tempted to give up. We may be tempted to walk away. We may be tempted to quit. But like the psalmist says, wait on the Lord and he will strengthen your heart. Wait on him. He will turn things around for you. Wait, because things truly are working together for your good and mine. Wait, because in a little while, he will bring you through the test. He will set your feet on a solid foundation. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't start fighting the good fight of faith. Don't stop running this race. God has victory in store for you. You are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer through Jesus Christ who loves you. And even if you almost gave up, even if you almost quit, even if you almost forfeited everything that God has promised you, he doesn't condemn you for that. He doesn't change his mind about you. You are still his beloved, and he will still make good on his promises. The Father is admonishing you, his people, to approach him for all our sustenance, for all of our provision. In this current state of being, no matter what we may be going through, no matter what society is doing, no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what the rest of the world is doing, no matter what the scoffers, the doubters, all of those people who, don't not, who do not subscribe to whatever God says, it doesn't even matter. Because we serve the risen Savior. We serve the Holy One. We serve the mighty God. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. We need to believe God's word. Not after we've gotten ourselves together. Because truth be told, we can't get ourselves together. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Not of our own works. We can't really get ourselves together. It takes Jesus. It takes trust in the living God. But God admonishes us like he did the Hebrews way back when to come and to purchase wine and milk without money and without price. And this is a characteristic of his nature. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the God that supplies all of our need. Hallelujah. He's the one that supplies and provides not only nourishment, but gives us seasons of joy and celebration as well absolutely, positively free of charge. We don't deserve it, we don't pay for it, and we certainly don't earn it, but he gives it to us. The father asks this question, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Which is to say, why are you waiting or wasting precious time on resources, on existence that isn't living? Things that are are not conducive for joy. God says, incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. 
Hear and your soul shall live. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Hear, listen, trust me, trust my word, and your soul shall live. He says he will make an everlasting covenant with us. Then he pleads with us saying, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. What God is saying, brothers and sisters, is yes, I do love you. If you've ever wondered, if you've ever questioned whether you are beloved, trust me, you are. And yes, I can pardon your sins. And yes, I want to bless you. And yes, I want to provide for you. But there's that conjunction again, which means there's a qualifier for that. You must find yourself in me, not in your own, of course, your own abilities, your own skills, your own charisma, but in me. It isn't about your, your way of doing things any longer. Stop thinking that the world revolves around you. God says, just so you know, my thoughts are not your thoughts. He says, just so you know, my ways are not your ways. We're not equal and we're not on the same level. You are a created being, limited in your abilities, apt to fail and falter and fall. You're a sinner in need of a savior. But I'm God, equal to none other creator of all things, the giver of life, the provider and the sustainer, holy and righteous in all of my ways and in, incapable of error, alpha and omega, sovereign yet merciful and kind, always just and always true. Here and you will live. You may come to me and I will give you both sustenance and abundance. Stop doing things your own way. Stop taking matters into your own hands. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. Trust me. Trust my word. Trust me because I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. I'm not just a God of anger or wrath. I'm a God of abundance. I'm not a God of rage, only a God of rage and condemnation but I'm a God of love. I'm long suffering and I'm understanding. I'm a God of joy instead of sorrow. I'm a God of hope instead of despair. I'm a God of peace instead of chaos. I'm a God of abundance instead of lack. Blessed assurance of eternal life in heaven instead of fear of an eternity in hell. I give you power to walk according to my statutes. I give you power to stand against all adversities. I give you power to pray until something happens. I give you power to believe and to repent and to report unto the Lord. I, I give you power to denounce the ways of the world, power to change from sinner to saint, power to forsake all else and to follow me. And God says here, and you shall live. Come, let us reason together. He says, though your sins are as scarlet, or though your sins are as red as crimson, although you've lived in a way that is unholy, ungodly, unrighteous for years, you can live according to my word, according to my plan, according to my law, according to my precepts, all by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The psalmist says, I almost quit. He says, I almost threw in the towel. I was on the verge of throwing it all in and walking away. And I know I'm not the only one. He wasn't the only one who's ever felt that way because as human beings, the Bible says, man that is born of a woman is full of trouble. And we're of a few days and they're full of trouble. The Bible says all who will live godly are going to suffer persecution. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. I could go on and on and on. But suffice it to say, brothers and sisters, that in this world, in this life, we're going to encounter all kinds of opposition, all kinds of obstacles. 
trials and tribulations. There will be some highs and some lows, some good times and some bad times, some happy times and some sad times. But as long as we trust God, as long as we hold on, as long as we believe his word, and I would, I would suggest to, to all of you, and, and, and I would suspect that none of us got up this morning and on a Sunday morning when we could, slept in, we could have slept in and decided, I'm going to drive all the way, whether it's across the street, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to drive all the way to the church and be surrounded by a, whole, by a whole bunch of people and listen to this man speak some words just because I have nothing better to do. I would suggest that you came because you want something from the Lord. I would suggest that you came because you're expecting something from the Lord, that there is some semblance of hope. There is a little bit of faith. And that's all God requires. The Bible says that if we have faith the size of the grain of a mustard seed, we can speak to the mountains in our lives. Brothers and sisters, men and women of God, there are so many things that could cause us to quit, throw in the towel, turn and walk away. But in doing so, we would forever regret this great grace, unmerited favor that God offers us, eternal life, full of joy and peace that none of us deserve, that all of us can have. The prerequisite and the only requirement is that we trust God. Galatians, and finally, Galatians 6, 9 says, Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, in God's time, if you hold on, if you keep the faith, if you don't give up, you will reap a just reward. God bless you.